it's T with T Quilts, and today is October 30th, 2020, and I'm here to do my October finishes for the month. Anything else that I finish in the next 24 hours or so, I will just add into the November video. So one thing that I do want to insert is a picture here of the Cleopatra fans. I am doing a sew along on Saturday nights on my YouTube channel. Started sewing last week, but I started two weeks ago as far as talking about it and the Cleopatra fan quilt blocks that we're doing. I have die cut mine and other people are using a pattern from Robert Kaufman and I'll try to remember to give you a link probably in the description box on how you can get the pattern if you want to use templates and participate. But thought that I would just add that up here. I got a system going pretty good and it takes about 40 to 45 minutes to make one block but I am so enjoying it and as of this time I have 12 blocks completed but I have 36 blocks cut out. 18 of them will be different and then I have the option of making those same 18 twice or perhaps mixing up the fabrics but I probably would just make them twice to make it easier on myself. But let's go outside so we can see some of the quilts. of the five quilt tongue I'm going to have to show you these four and then I will come back and add the fifth quilt for you all to see so first off here I've got you zoomed in on a rail fence that's made by Lisa she asked me to quilt two of these quilts and they are in different pattern ways so this is the first one that I quilted it was the batik one I did very dense quilting on this one I'm not sure if um, you can see that but they are very dense that's the smallest curls that i have ever done which is the name of the panto and now let me zoom out so that you can see the entire quilt top here so there we go there's the entire quilt top and then the backing she used a spotted batik so let me zoom you back in so i can go show you the back So hopefully you can see the backing. Let's go on to quilt number two. So this quilt number two is made in more of a softer color palette, pinks and greens, and just gorgeous. We use Panto called Anne's flowers I think this one's called Anne's favorite flowers that's the name of this panto and let me zoom out so you can see the entire quilt top right there very pretty so I did two of them for Lisa I just took these two quilts off of my long arm they're the last two quilts that I just completed but I'm showing them to you in order of smallest to largest just because of my deck size. So very nice. And then I will just take you up close because it looked like we were having trouble before. So this is her backing with the quilting. And again, I had to pin the back up because she just uh, put the two widths of fabric yardage together. And so they were a little longer than what I needed, but I didn't want them on the ground. So I had to pin them up. So let me pull that back down because I still have to um, also take pictures so that I can send them to the customer before they pick up. This quilt here is the quilt that I did as a sew along as well. I will put a link up at the eye above for you. I decided to donate this quilt as a 10th 
anniversary on YouTube prize to my customers that have purchased for me in 2020. And it took two drawings, but this quilt now belongs to Judy Judy. I will show you the label as well when I get up close. But I just wanted to give you an aerial view of the quilt top. The border at the top is not showing. A little bit is missing because I didn't want it to hang in the grass down at the bottom. But yeah, I love this quilt. And instead of using geometrics that were kind of squarish, I decided to go with a circular pattern. I'm not sure what the actual name of this is, but I just did loopy circles and thought that it contrasted well with it as well. And now you can actually see my border prints too here. I did have a, a whole video series on how to make this quilt from start to finish. I did this for my beginner quilters. And then on the back, I just have this kind of modeled tone on tone print. So I don't think you have to worry here about trying to see the quilting because you could see it really well on the front side of the quilt. But what I wanted to show you is the quilt label that I made. Also making sure that it's T-Quilt's 10th anniversary customer appreciation. Wanted to make sure that that was in. And then right here, one by Judy Brown. Here is the fourth quilt top that I actually did the quilting on. It also has the curls pattern. And this quilt top, is actually pieced by Kevin. It's so funny because as soon as I start recording bright quilts or quilts with flowers, I get honeybees, butterflies, and so we've got some kind of critter that has come into this quilt thinking that it's about to get some nectar. Right there, just flew onto the quilt right before I started filming. <laughs> but anyway, beautiful work here. This quilt top is a commissioned quilt and it is actually pieced by Kevin, the quilter, my dear friend Kevin. And then he also asked me to quilt this quilt. I'm not gonna, well, I can say that the owner, the commissioner of this quilt, I've just got another B, second B on this quilt, guys. <laughs> the commissioner of this quilt, her name is Kim. And I am not gonna say what else, anything else about the personals of this quilt top because just in case somebody is watching that I'm not aware of, but I did the quilting, Kevin, uh, the quilter did the piecing and he's going to do the binding. I did the square up on this quilt as included in the price of uh, quilting. So I am going to take a few pictures of these and then I will come back with the final quilt that I wanted to show you for this month. Here is our final quilt that is almost completed for the month of October. I still need to make a label and hand sew the binding to the back. I even need to attach the binding at the bottom. I tend to not do that until I have put a label on the quilt if it's one that I made completely. So that kind of warns me that I need to put a label on the back. So let me back you up. Okay. So let me zoom you out so you can see the entire quilt top. Now this is my quilt and so this is my quilt and I don't mind it being on the ground so you can see the entire quilt. But I made 100 pineapple blocks for this quilt. I did it as a sew along as well. I used the AccuQuilt Go pineapple die to do this one. This is my second of three pineapple quilts that I've started in 2020. I'm trying to make some pineapple quilts so that I can do a lecture and I may be doing some other ones as well but I have another one that I have the blocks made that's using Guileen Fitzgerald's method with her pineapple tool and that's the next one that I need to finish before I start any more. But I have started and completed two of three of my pineapple quilts and I do plan to get the other one done before 2020 is out. So yes, loving the pineapple quilts. Been wanting to do this for years. When AccuQuilt came out with this die, I was like, yes, I can do that. But gorgeous quilt. I use curls because I have a fabric that has like swirls in the fabric in the black in my 
setting piece and I'll try to show you that when I get up close if, if you can't see it in the quilting then I will show it to you on the binding because it's the same fabric but I am so proud of this I'm so glad that I got it done 3,700 pieces later <laughs> um, yeah I was kind of sick and tired of making the pineapple blocks I'm glad number one that I did do it scrappy because if it had been the same fabrics used throughout it would have been very boring to me because I started to get bored around the 70th block or so so let me take you up close so that you can see the swirl in the black fabric so I don't know if you can even see the swirl in that fabric but you can most definitely see it here in the binding material and you can even see it right here so I thought that I would use that. This was actually the first quilt that I finished for the month. And then it was just ironic that I had other quilts that followed, two other quilts that followed where the customers pick the curls as the design for their quilting. So this is one of my favorite quilting designs as a matter of fact. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the back of this quilt. I did um, a three piece backing. I had a piece of 108 wide that was not wide enough to go all the way through it was a remnant that i purchased and so i put some white pieces on the other side So this is my actual backing. So we lost battery power, so I replaced my battery. But basically I had this piece of remnant that I had just showed you where when Kevin and I were at Ace Hardware, where I had purchased this backing with the words on it. And so I didn't have enough, but I had another piece of scrap batting in the plain white that's kind of tone on tone. It's like a beige with white tone on tone. And so I just put it on either side of the quilt so that I could put the words in the middle. But the words, at first I thought they were all food words, but they're all kinds of words. And I'll go up on top so you can read some of them, but I just wanted to show you the backing here. And then I'll take you up on deck to read some of the words. As I said before, I thought these words were all like food words at first but then you start to see that there are other words in here colors foods birds and a host of other things <laughs> But like I said, we found this at, uh, Kevin actually found it at Ace Hardware and he bought enough to put on the back of a quilt. And then I bought the remainder, which was about two yards or so. And so I just decided to put it in the middle here. It was uh, 108, so I had enough for my width, but I didn't have enough to go across the entire quilt. But I love it. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to... Um, using it once I get the hand binding completed. Okay, so that's it for this video, guys. See you next time. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.